Hey guys, it's Leila Khan. I'll be doing the salivary glands right now. So, about the salivary glands, um, you need to know that there are major and minor salivary glands. So we have a mnemonic for the major and the minor, the names. So for the major, we have a PSS or P2S, which I tell you would be put to sleep. And for the minor ones, we've got LLBP, which would be ladies love buying presents, which is a fact. So put your sleep, we'll start with the major ones. So they are situated outside the mouth, okay? So that's one, outside mouth. And then this one would be inside the mouth of course so basically the minor ones they empty directly into the cavity via short ducts so because they have short ducts they are inside the mouth and they empty directly into the cavity D. directly into the cavity okay now we'll put the letters down. So we've got P, two, sleep would be S, and another S. Then we've got L, L, B, and P. Now L, L, B, P would be labial, glance, lingual, buccal, and palatine. So it's just different parts inside the mouth, so you've got the lips, you've got the tongue, the buckle, which are kind of like the cheeks, and you've got the palatine, which is the, like the roof of the mouth. All of them are the names of the glands. And for the major, you've got three. So put to sleep would be the parotid gland, which is the largest out of the three. Then you've got the submandibular gland and sublingual. Now there are a few differences between them, but the um, the duct system is the same. So they have intercalated ducts, intralobular ducts. Is that's the same? The, there are just a few differences now. <clears throat> the location is one. So for the parotid, you have it's below the external acoustic meatus, between the mandible and the sternocleidomastoid muscle. Okay. And then the ducts open into the vestibule of the mouth. So it's opposite the upper second molar tooth. I'm just going to say the duct opens into the vestibule the vestibule of the mouth and it's got adipose tissue this is one differentiating factor parotid gland has got a lot of adipose tissue surrounding it okay and it's got a fibrous capsule with fibrous septa so the fibrous septa divides it into lobules and lobes so we've got a fibrous capsule which I'm going to write as FC with fibrous septa which I'll write as FS and the type of the um, duct or gland would be tubulo alveolar Type and which type is it serous or mucus? It would be serous, asinine type. Okay, that's important. Now, looking at this, we can differentiate the other two. Now, the submandibular gland is just beneath the body of the mandible, so beneath the body of the mandible. The ducts extend forward to open into the mouth cavity on either side of the frenulum of the tongue. So ducts open on either side of the frenulum.
Okay, so it's just behind the lower incisor teeth. It's got a fibrous capsule, so I'm going to write FC and a fibrous septa, FS, which divides it into lobes and nebules. There is no adipose tissue, so I'm only going to write adipose tissue on parotid, so that's the difference. Uh, you've got again tubulo, alveolar, ducts, asinite ducts of both mucus and serous types, mucus and serous, but remember that, that the submentibula, the majority is the serous type. Okay, now moving on to the sublingual, which is the smallest one. It is below the floor of the mouth, anterior to the submentibula. So anterior to submentibula. It's got no fibrous capsule, no fibrous septa. It's just got loose connective tissue separating it into lobes and nebules. The uh, ducts are the same. So we've got a tubulobe, alveolar, asini, again, of, just like the submandibular, of both mucus and serous. But if this one's predominantly serous, then this one would be mucus. So mucus, arrow, and exclamation mark. Alright, so that is it for the salivary glands. Put to sleep and ladies love buying presents. Um, if you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos. Take care, guys.